Welcome back, everybody. we got a lot of work left to do on this cage, and because of the holidays, this is going to be a short week, so let's get right to it. The first thing we have to do is get the dash pad reinstalled. In order to do that, we're going to have to do some trimming to make it fit around the uh, cage A pillars that we installed earlier. With the dash pad reinstalled, we can see exactly where we want to place the spreader tube that will go above the dash between the A-pillars. Before we do any grinding or welding, I threw some welding blankets over the seats to protect them. This ended up not being the greatest idea I've ever had. The seats were protected, but I sure paid for it later after climbing around on fiberglass blankets all day. Now that we got the crossbar in place, that's going to provide a lot more strength if we get a hit from the side near, here up near the A-pillars. But now, uh, Alan wants a nice V right down the center here. So I'm going to go like that. And like that. That's going to pro provide uh, some more protection here. And Frankly, Alan just really likes the look. We made the V-tubes out of inch and a half tubing rather than inch and three quarter. So we block less of the view through the windshield. Once the tubes were notched to the correct angle, I tacked them onto a straight tube on the bench so they could mark the angle where the two tubes would be welded together. Once I was satisfied that all the cuts were correct, I welded them in place back on the truck. The V section is now complete. We had to add disconnects there as well because this section is gonna be stuck behind the dash and we want to be able to remove the whole rest of the cage. So disconnects there as well as the top and bottom of the A-pillars themselves. The next step, or what we'd like to do next, is continue on and work on our halo. But before we do that, I want to remove the seats. I don't want to get the seats messed up, and, but the reason the seats are in there is so that we can see exactly where we need to put in the tube that's going to support our shoulder harnesses. So let's get that tube in first, then we can remove the seats and get to work on the halo. The tube that's going to support our seatbelt harnesses here needs to be attached to the B pillar. And typically you would have, you would attach it directly between the, the B pillars. But you can see with the seats fully back, they would contact that tube. And uh, I, I don't want to give up that room. I want the seats to be able to come all the way back. So what we're going to do is instead of putting the tube directly in line with the B-pillar, we're going to space it slightly back so that uh, it's not going to contact the seats. The next thing we need to be aware of is the harnesses are going to attach the tube like so, and the tube needs to be spaced down so that the, the harnesses come through the seat between zero and 20 degrees down. So we're gonna aim for 10. So we did some measurement and it turns out that this I-beam gives us pretty much the, the perfect height for our tube that's gonna work and give us the right angle for our shoulder harnesses. So we got our tube bent up. 
that in place just like that. Just like that. Let's get her welded up. After the tube was tacked into place, we added the tabs for the shoulder harnesses. I'm using the level to make sure that all of the tabs end up on the same plane. Once I had everything in place where I wanted it, it was time to burn it in. With the harness tube in place, we didn't need the seats anymore, so we removed them and the console. This will keep them from getting damaged and make it a lot easier to move around as we finish off the cage. I spent some time mocking up uh, the rest of the support tubes that we need to put in with, uh, with some of our uh, blue tape here. And I think we've got a pretty good plan going. Uh, it's a lot more tubes. I think I counted up 19 more tubes we've got to put in. So let's start putting these tubes together and uh, making some progress on this cage. Creating all of the support tubes is a long process and it can get a bit repetitive. It's a whole lot of measuring, cutting, coping, and then repeating the process over and over again. I promise, I wasn't purposely doing wardrobe changes here. This part of the build took several days. Once all the tubes were placed, it was time to do a ton of welding. All right. Well, that is the last of the support tubes. Um, everything's not completely welded in. Um, we're gonna pull the cage so that we can flip it over and uh, get a better angle on getting some of the bottom welds in. But uh, before we do that, we have one last thing to do. We gotta add some handholds, I guess two last things, and put in the spare tire holder. Um, shouldn't take us long. Let's get those knocked out, and then we can get this cage pulled. In order to make the grab handles, I needed to change out the die on the bender. We found that inch and a quarter tubing makes a great handhold. Once they're bent, we cut them to size and then cope them to fit the cage tubes. For the spare tire carrier, we welded some steel studs to this mounting plate we got from Midnight 4x4 here in Salt Lake. We then mounted it to one of the tires so that we could put it in place and use it to mock up the correct location for our mount. We created a cardboard template, then transferred that to some 14 gauge steel plate. Once the pieces were cut, we use our dimple dies to add some rigidity and a bit of cool factor. The mounting plate is welded to a piece of inch and a half tube, slightly offset. This allows you to rotate the tire mount up and down so you can adjust for different tire sizes and keep the tire resting on the floor. This also makes it easier to get the tire mounted. I think we're finally ready to pull the cage. As you can see, we got the spare tire uh, carrier in. Got our handhelds done, we added some gussets. So let's get this cage out, flip it over, and start welding the bottom of these tubes.
All right, we've run into a problem and an opportunity. Um, when we were originally designing the cage, one of the things we talked about was making this whole seat uh, support area be removable from the cage. Uh, but we decided in the end, well, if it's not necessary, we won't do it. it. Turns out it is necessary. When we want to remove the cage, we want to just be able to pull it back and then up and out. The problem is we can't come straight back without running into the bed here and we can't come up any because the windshield frame actually wraps over the top of our cage a little bit. So we're kind of stuck in place. Well, the solution to that is just make this uh, seat support area removable. So that's what we're going to do. We tacked in some tube disconnects to the back of our seat support section and then removed it for final welding. With the seat section out of the way, the cage came right out. With the cage out, Ryan got to work doing the finished welding on the seat section, while I built a few more gussets. Doing the final welding on a cage takes a lot of welding. It can seem like you're using miles of wire, but between Ryan and I, we were able to knock it out pretty quickly. Being able to manipulate the cage around so that we could weld at an optimal angle definitely made things go a lot more smoothly. Once the welding was done, we gave it some time to cool down and then cleaned all of the oils off the tubes and got it painted. Once the paint dried, it was time to reinstall everything. I love building custom cages. Each one is unique and it's fun to design as you go. And it's always so satisfying to see the finished product. I really love how this one turned out and I'm sure Alan is going to get a lot of enjoyment out of it as well. All that was left to do at this point was reinstall the windshield and the hardtop, and this cage build is finished. Here's one last look at the finished product before I pull the Jimmy out of the shop. The cage build is done, but there's still a lot of work to do before Alan's Jimmy is ready to wheel. However, BYT is going to full size invasion next week, so we've got to get it into the shop for a bolt check and some maintenance. If you like what we do, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It'll really help us out. Thanks for watching. You in a garage.